Alright guys, we are finding out why Mr. Beast Burger is McDonald's worst nightmare today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that sub button and let's get it. It took McDonald's over 20 years to open 300 locations. And in December Bet. 2020, Beast Burger opened 300 locations in a single day. Day. For yeah, the first time in its base. history, McDonald's are coming to the realization that a kid from North Carolina is quickly becoming their worst nightmare. With 10,000 people at a restaurant opening, 15 million in sales in just under 48 hours, and a combined following of 300 million people, this is the story of how Beast Burger is trying to take down the clown. Burgers are a big business. Americans devour nearly 100,000 burgers every minute. That and that is why 90%, no, what's the statistic? Like 53% of Americans are fat fucks. That's enough burgers yearly to circle the entire planet 32 times. That's or outrageous. Oh times. my God. Economists even use the Big Mac index to calculate exchange rates depending <coughs> on the price of a Big Mac in two different countries. McDonald's has been unstoppable for many decades and owns around 45% of the fast food industry across the world. Makes sense. Until now. Jimmy Donaldson, aka Mr. Breast, a beast, has used his 300 million global followers to take advantage of unseen methods of running a fast food business, which even McDonald's can't match. Beast Burger is- To be fair, if there was a Beast Burger in Australia, in my area, I would go- Well, I don't eat fast food, but I would go there before I go to Burger King or anything like that. Just because I'd rather support a YouTuber, like an individual YouTuber who actually does help people, over a fucking global brand. It's not your traditional fast food chain. Up until recently, Beast Burger had no physical locations at all. You could only order via food delivery apps. So you may be wondering, how can a business sell physical food on demand without a physical location? Yeah, what? Well, they're called ghost kitchens. Stupid. Think of a kitchen as a manufacturing operation. The equipment used here is very expensive. We're talking Back Chanel sense. Diamond Forever handbags expensive. And whether you serve 100 customers or 1,000 customers, it costs the same to run. So when you're sitting on your sofa at 7 p.m. on a Saturday night ordering your seven takeaway of the week, your local Buddy Burger is very, very busy and operating at full capacity. This is where the genius of virtual dining concepts come in. Their business model takes influencers with the most dedicated and biggest audiences and makes agreements with the existing restaurants across the world to manufacture the product. In this case, Beast Burgers. The restaurants are given branded packaging, so to Mr. Beast fans, it looks like it came from Beast Burger instead of their local Buddy Burger. The struggling restaurant gets a generous revenue share to cover their costs. And Mr. Beast and Virtual Dining Concepts take a hefty cut for their effort. That's fucking genius. Do you know, I would never have... Obviously, there's a lot of smart people in this world. There really is. I wouldn't have even thought of that concept. I'd have just opened one individual shop and went, yep, yeah, there we go. I am very much behind the times when it comes to the online world. It's a win-win situation, and it's working. Beast Burger has skyrocketed to one of the most popular fast food chains across America, and he's doing it like a badass. And as of July 2022, Beast Burger has shared over $100 million in revenue. Modeling That's a few different scenarios, we believe that Beast Burger could be profiting anywhere between 50 grand and 100 grand each day. Not a bad way to monetize your audience with sweet fuck all downside. <laughs> this strategy sounds amazing. So why aren't other companies doing it? I like love this guy. Who the fuck is he? Millennial MBA. Oh, yeah, you get my sub, bro. Oh, it doesn't happen much on this channel. Fucking oath. Well, just like Millennial MBA's imaginary girlfriends, this model has some downsides. It can be very hard to ensure quality across all third-party restaurants. This has led to fans in certain areas to complain about slow delivery, receiving cold food, and food yeah. that is not being prepared properly. So this begs the question, hmm. should McDonald's, Burger King, and all the other fast food joints switch to this business model? Well, even though our ass is very sore from sitting on the fence here, we're gonna say both yes and no. Despite Beast Burger and McDonald's selling the same products, they actually have very different goals. Famously, McDonald's founder, Ray Kroc, was once told by its president, Harry Sonburn, that McDonald's isn't actually a fast food chain. It's a Ponzi scheme. <clears throat> it's a real estate company. McDonald's owns thousands of iconic pieces of real estate across the globe. From New York City's Times Square to Moscow's Red Square, McDonald's has ventured across the world, buying up real estate in the most in-demand places. 
Franchises pay McDonald's a cut of their food sales, but a much larger portion of McDonald's revenue comes from the rent it's paid on its real estate. After all, rent at Times Square isn't cheap. But a Big Mac is. And while McDonald's still enjoys significant revenue share from its franchisee sales, it enjoys a much fatter revenue stream from the leases of 38,000 franchisee-owned restaurants. This is a totally different approach to Beast Burger which only has one physical location. Given that Beast Burger already has an unfathomable amount of demand, they can build their physical locations without worrying about finding a customer base, while the larger fast food franchises scramble to find suitable influencers to promote their product. If Beast Burger was to compete with McDonald's on this scale, first of all, he would have to improve his trash talk. McDonald's screw you. Because it's weak. Go on, fuck you McDonald's, go Mr. Beast. Secondly, he would probably- Unless you feel like sponsoring the channel. In that case, I don't give a shit who you are. ...create a franchise and bring in a veteran CEO to run the operation. This is already part of Mr. Beast's playbook. Jimmy is a fucking genius, man. You know, because he's such a genuine person and like he What was his last video? He just helped blind people, like a thousand blind people? That's nuts. And just because of that, you know, I'd rather buy a Mr. Beast chocolate bar. If it's a little, maybe an extra dollar then I would go buy a fucking Cadbury one. For Feastables, they brought in the former president of Or X Bar, which was acquired by Kellogg's for $600 million. And after seeing what Beast Burger did with its first physical location, Jimmy should establish a flagship store in the biggest cities across the world and make an appearance for each of the openings. This would bring thousands of customers to the restaurant and generate millions of impressions in local PR. Their grand openings alone will let the entire sitting and surrounding region know that Beast Burger has arrived. And from there, you can grow into smaller towns and districts. The success of Mr. Beast Burger has shown the power of influencer marketing. The key oh. advantage creators like Mr. Beast have over companies like McDonald's is the way they acquire customers for free. McDonald's invested $1.62 billion in advertising in the US in 2020. Ouch. Contrast that to Mr. Beast Beast who gets paid to advertise Beast Burger. This is a although Mr. Beast does spend a ridiculous not that sort of money, but a ridiculous sum of money. A huge advantage for Mr. Beast. And we have seen more fast food companies engage with creators to get access to their audience. For example, okay. Dunkin' Donuts have partnered with Charlie D'Amelio to collaborate on an iced coffee product. McDonald's have collaborated with other influencers in the past, like Travis Scott and Maria Carey. Rick and Morty advertise Wendy's. And every year, these traditional companies are finding it harder and harder to secure influencers, since influencers would rather monetize their own audience by building their own businesses. Hey, the boys are the side. Oh, man. Oh, that's wicked. I'm so glad that I'm out of here. Beast Burger has really highlighted the beginning of the end for traditional influencer business models. Affiliate marketing and sponsored posts are no longer going to be the revenue generator. The trend instead is shifting to influencers producing their own private label by partnering with vertical integrated manufacturers, such as Prime okay. by KSI and Logan Paul. And they have taken on one of the most competitive industries in the world, and they're winning. Even more so, the idea wasn't even theirs. Although, to be fair, with the Prime, as much as they are choosing a very highly competitive industry, it's really only competitive via Gatorade and Powerade. So if you start beating out them too, you're fucking smashing it, really. Alright guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that sub button. Millennial NBA links in the description, as for always, I sub to them. I actually found... I've watched that Will Prime make KSI on Logan Paul billionaires. Yes, it probably will. But, guys... It's a really good channel to watch. And if you're interested in stuff like this, like I am, like eventually I'm going to build my own brand off of either this channel or the another channel I'm working on or the B3N channel. It's more than likely going to happen eventually. So, guys, if you're interested in this stuff, make sure you watch him. If you like the video, hit that sub button. If you want to see more like this, leave a link in the description. Let, leave a link in the comments, not description. And see you on the next one. Ah, right, peace.